Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And I got to start with this. Boom, CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse says... I think what we are doing and executing on a day-by-day -day basis is in fact taking over SWIFT. Now they said if we take 10% of SWIFT's business, it would catapult XRP to $1,000 plus. But I think that only actually gets us to three digits. But take a listen to Brad here. I think what we're doing and executing on a day-by-day -day basis is in fact taking over SWIFT in that you know, we've now signed up you know, well over 100 banks. Some of the largest SWIFT-enabled banks in the world are now using Ripple's technology. Uh, I mean, just last week, we saw a, a, a remittance company who's using Ripple's technology. They reduced the price per transaction to their consumers from $20 per transaction to $2 per transaction, and they saw an 800% increase in usage overnight. Think about that. An 800% usage overnight increase. And you still don't think that what, whatever bank starts to work with Ripple and utilize XRP, they are always going to get the upper hand over their competition. But I wanted to talk about this, and this is an older video, because look what's going on right now. BRICS officially announces financial system similar to SWIFT, but they are not using SWIFT. And here's the part about that that gets interesting. So if we only had to capture 10% of SWIFT's business to get to a three-digit XRP, what if we capture 50% of SWIFT's business? All of a sudden, we make it to 589. And all of those BRICS countries already have Ripple Rails set up inside of them. So it makes sense that the system that the BRICS are going to be utilizing is most likely RippleNet and XRP. They still need that trust layer. But now that we see the BRICS announcing this, it all comes into perspective. We are so close to the new financial system, it's not even funny anymore. I mean, people were talking about years away. I think we are months away at this point. But what about regulations? Remember I kept telling you, we're going to have global crypto regulations. And this is why I said, now that you see Mika and how it's playing a weighing factor on Tether going forward, every single country is going to have Mika-like regulations. Take a listen to this. Many of these crypto assets are uh, offered from places that I would call sunny places for shady people. Um, Can you give an example? Well, uh, <laughs> I think we all know uh, the, the kind of locations that we, where, that we are talking about. So we need to have a global framework to regulate this. It doesn't make sense to just have national approaches. I think this is mm. truly global, uh, global in nature. And so we have been working concretely, and then I'll stop, uh, on updating our uh, regulations on global stablecoin arrangements mm -hmm. and coming forward with a new set of uh, recommendations for what we call unbacked crypto assets or other crypto assets. They are now in the open for consultation. So we are uh, looking forward very much for sort of the response. Take notice he said unbacked crypto regulations. So they already know certain cryptocurrencies are going to be asset backed. Some stable coins are going to be asset backed. I think Ripple and Ripple's XRP and Stellar's XLM are going to be asset backed, backed by value that they're moving on a daily basis. It could be anything of value. It could be oil. It could be gold backed CBDC. It doesn't matter. But he's talking about global crypto regulations, and that was back in November of last year. I think regulations are already written, and I think they're just going to be handed down. And I'm sure Mika regulations most likely were worked on through the World Economic Forum as well. Because everything lines up that for a global stablecoin, 
like one coin to rule them all. Is it going to be Ripple's new stable coin? Is it going to be Ripple's new stable coin and USDC? We really don't know yet, but everything is already on that path. Former Ripple employee Marcus Treacher confirming that XRP is infinitely scalable with the help of ILP and that the liquidity model of XRP was meant to scale to 7 to 9 billion people. If you didn't know, that's every single person on earth. All the money. And of course, it has to be able to fit the need of every single person on the planet. That would make sense. And that's why I always said, even if XRP is not a world's reserve currency, it's going to be the world's bridge currency. It's going to be bridging in between every single CBDC all around the world. And the price is not going to be cheap. For those of you who don't know, XRP and XLM have a common owner in Jed McCaleb. XRP and XLM more connected than you'd think. Both share a common founder and XLM is actually a ripple fork. Both saw huge pumps after the SEC ruling. XLM is even making waves in the CBDC space. From well under a penny to where it is now. XLM has potential for big gains. Like I kept telling people all along the way, if you're going to diversify and you hold XRP, definitely be holding XLM and vice versa. Because even once the Rippleverse SEC case ends and XRP starts to take off, it's taking XLM with it. When CBDCs go live all around the world, XRP is going to jump in price and XLM is going to jump with it. And they're both now going in the same direction. Banking the unbanked, leveling the playing field. CBDCs. Stellar's working on Ukraine CBDC. XRP tied into mu multiple CBDCs all around the world. But they will run together. And this is something I've been wanting to point out for a while. We'll keep all our finances private, but track every penny they spend anywhere. And, you know, the elites, they're not going to have their money tracked. And that's why I told you, you have to get rich off of your crypto holdings before a CBDC gets put in place. XRP and XLM is going to be running up ahead of a CBDC. Get rich while you can. Because I don't think they're going to be tracking rich people's spending habits. They're going to be tracking anyone that's tied to government money. And even rich people are not going to be living under CBDC at first. They're going to be tied in later. But if you're a crypto investor and a crypto holder, and if you're holding XRP and XLM, the cryptocurrencies that the elites are holding, most likely you'll be interacting on a parallel system because they talked about parallel systems multiple times at the BIS, the IMF, and the World Economic Forum. I like to remind people of that all the time because that's how important it is that you invest in the right way now. Ripple says XRP-powered payment platform expanded to 80-plus countries. Now, I mentioned this in a video yesterday, but I didn't really highlight on it. The fact that Ripple has rails put in place in 80 countries, that tells you that XRP is not going to be cheap. It's going to be at a very high price in the future. When they always talked about XRP and XLM as stable coins, they weren't talking about XRP and XLM sitting at a dollar. High valued stable coins moving value from one country to another. And another thing that XLM is tied into is tokenization, very similar to XRP. It's going to be moving tokenized value from point A to point B, just like XRP. These two cryptocurrencies are going to have fantastic run-ups. Same thing's going to happen with XDC. The future looks great is what I'm telling you. The Ripple share buyback, $1.4 billion. 
This is not some pump and dump project. They are playing the long game and they know what's coming. It's a risk not to own XRP. This comes from Alex Cobb. Take a listen. Liquidity in those things. I mean, look, I, I've always viewed an IPO as a step in the journey, not the end of a journey. What we have done instead of, and this is actually new news that we haven't shared publicly, we have done a series of tender offers where we've been buying shares back from uh, investors and employees. And we now, we're in the middle of another tender offer. And after we finish this, we will have repurchased $1.4 billion of stock from our shareholders. Wow, that's a huge amount. And the reason I wanted to point this out is because people still think that Ripple is buying back XRP. They are buying back Ripple shares ahead of an IPO. And, you know, Ripple also could be buying those shares back for other reasons. You know, Ripple seems to be growing nonstop. They went from being a U.S.-based company to becoming a massive global company, a massive global liquidity provider. And it's nonstop growth at Ripple. So anybody that's worried about the price of XRP today, you have to look at the much, much bigger picture. This cryptocurrency is going to give you financial freedom. If you hold it long enough, it will give you generational wealth. But you can't fall into the FUD. You can't sell because you're frustrated at the sideways price movement. Ripple's playing the long game. You should be pay playing the long game as well as an XRP investor. You want to make sure you're holding when XRP reaches its full potential. Because I think early, we will see three digits. But if you hold it long enough, four digits, five digits is even possible. You know, you could listen to the people talking about market cap in previous cycles or you could look at the much bigger picture. You're holding a cryptocurrency that's going to be part of the new financial system. It's built to serve every single person on the planet. But until it all happens, you got to stay patient, stay positive, so we can get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.